Just like the weather, these summer episodes have been heating up. Whenever I hop on social media to post, I am also always looking for potential guests to bring to any of my shows. I began seeing a lot on mental health related stories from today's guest and soon learned how her personal and professional life both prioritize mental health. Welcome back to a mental health break. I'm your host and author of the book, Mr. Lancey Talks Mental Health, Vincent A. Lancey. Every week on this platform, I sit down with a mental health advocate or professional from around the country and across the world to share their journey relating to mental health. I decided to create this platform after a turning point in my life where I was the victim of a hit and run accident while on foot. After recovering from a traumatic brain injury, I realized I needed to prioritize my mental health even more and that led me to creating this show. And before I introduce this week's guest, I have some exciting news to share with you all. This summer's episodes will be brought to you by Tampa Counseling and Wellness, dedicated to helping individuals looking to positively transform their lives through compassionate counseling and wellness coaching. If you struggle with depression, anxiety, or other mental health issues, call today for a free consultation. Tampa Counseling and Wellness, therapy that inspires change, and you can find their info in today's episode description, whether you want in-person visits or virtual assistance. I originally had met today's guest around five years ago through our mutual friend, Nicole, in Tampa. In addition to sharing her personal journey, she has much more to share. Having graduated with a bachelor's degree in psychology from Florida Gulf Coast University, she is now an ABA therapist who works with children that have been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Additionally, she is also pursuing a master's degree in applied behavior analysis to become eligible to sit for the board certified behavior analysis or the BCBA exam. All of this perspective, plus her own journey, get ready for a good one. Hillary Blakely, thank you for joining the show. Vinny, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. This is really cool and I'm really glad to uh, be a part of it. I'm excited to have you on. Would you mind introducing yourself a little more to our listeners and previewing your story and also touch again on your role relating to mental health today? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm originally from New York, which is funny because so are you. (laughs) And um, I was both now living in Florida and I have gotten into learning about psychology since I was in college and with my own mental health experiences and journey, I couldn't help but just dive into it more. I've done so much research. I work with kids that have autism spectrum disorder. And so for my professional and personal life, like you said, there's kind of just this middle ground of it's everywhere. Right now, especially after COVID, your job is extremely more fulfilling, I'm sure, because of how many kids really need your services. And this is what it's all about in your job field. You graduate to help these kids right away. But when you're dealing with these children, then we can deal with your personal life after. But when you're with the kids, what type of mental health disparities do you come across the most? And obviously, anxiety, depression, schizophrenia are common ones. A lot of them. And when I say a lot, I would say the majority deal with really bad anxiety. Um, Especially since this pandemic has hit, I had a kiddo I worked with who didn't leave his house for eight months because mom and dad were so scared of like COVID. Um, So even when we're in the clinics and doing what we need to do, the anxiety is crazy for these kiddos. And it's made me realize that everybody has had, especially in the last year, a really hard time. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, you know, it, it just shows that mental health is so important and everybody deals with it and it's everywhere. (laughs) The thing is you can't really have an opinion on how someone else handles their own family as far as keeping their kids in, believing what they need to believe about the COVID, but no matter what child or not being locked in the house for eight months can only do harm to your mental health. Children are used to going to school, socializing with their friends, playing sports. That's really all they know. And then they were stripped of that. You can't go to school. 
you can't go out with your friends, all of this. So in a world where children rely so much on adults already, this time period was extremely difficult for them. Now let's talk more about your personal journey. What did you experience? So I have had my struggles with mental health my entire adult life. Um, I've had terrible anxiety. I've had terrible depression. I've been diagnosed with panic disorder and something that has always been a trigger for me for whatever reason is when my relationships don't work out, it completely and totally throws me off course. Um, So the last year I was living in Arizona with a man that I was dating, it didn't end well. And my whole life felt like it was just pulled from underneath me. Uh, I called my mom one of the last days I was in Arizona and I was so depressed. I couldn't get through a work day. I was hysterically crying. And she was like, you know, maybe it's time to come back to the East coast, be with friends and family. And I started a very intense therapy program, um, which I'm lucky enough to have the means and the support system where I don't need to be, you know, working right now. And I can hundred percent focus on my mental health and I'm halfway through this program. And when I say it's life-changing, it's literally life-changing. Well, I'm glad to hear things are going well. Now, everyone listening on use that as an example, when things aren't going well, just know that there is a brighter day tomorrow. You just may not see it just yet. So keep up the great work, Hillary. But now let's backtrack a bit and talk about that first moment where you decided, hey, I'm going to start doing a career related to mental health. So I realized with my mental health struggles, a lot of my issues are emotion regulation and my behaviors of how I cope and how I manage. So when I started getting into the field of applied behavior analysis, a lot of these kids have very similar things. Mm -hmm. They need to learn emotion regulation. They need to know that they have to respond in healthy and effective behaviors. And I related to these kids so much of wow, this is actually a life skill that you need to become a productive part of society, to be perfectly honest. Um, So it really drew me in there because I was like, wow, I love working with kids and I really can relate to them on this level. And I feel like I can make a huge difference that way. I agree. You definitely are making a huge difference. Let's now ask, what is your favorite part of your job? I'm sure you have a lot of great moments of your day. This is your career. You chose it. But what's your favorite part of the job? My favorite part of the job is is seeing the progress. Um, I've worked with kids who are so anxious that they can't leave a room and or they can't separate from mom and dad, especially in this last year. You know, kids are really depending on their parents because there's nothing else to be focused on. Um, But when I watch the progress of instead of somebody screaming because they're so overwhelmed and anxious, being able to say what they need. Hey, I need a break. I need a minute. It is so rewarding because these are skills that are not just going to help them while we're in clinic and doing these things, but when they go into school and when they become adults and have families and relationships. So even though the progress sometimes is slow, it is definitely the best part of the job. Yeah, that's going to be great tools for their entire lives, but small steps, small wins. You have to appreciate the small gains because you can't just hit a home run. You have to get to first base, second, third, and home sometimes small wins in the right direction will propel you into a great mindset. I'm looking at Hillary now. She's smiling again and just (laughs) short like that. She's back on top, but let's work on some things that let's now look at some things that worked well for you and still do work well for you. We'll do short-term and long-term basis. What type of mental health tools do you use on the short-term basis? On the short-term basis, something that has been really heaven sent for me is running. I ran in high school and then as I got older, I was like, "Mm, I'm lazy, we're over this. Um, But my anxiety gets so bad to a point that sometimes I wake up in the morning and it's just all inside my body. Like my heart's racing, I'm sweating and I need an outlet for that. And I'll run a quick mile and my whole day is set up to just be better than it would have been if I didn't push myself to do it. I'm the same way with exercise. I'm religious with it in the morning. I go every single day or maybe one day a week, I won't go. That doesn't mean I don't lift weights every day, but I'm in there every single day to clear my head. 
does as much mental health benefit as physical benefit for me. It allows me to think clearly throughout my morning. And it certainly extends my day with the extra energy I need because I only have caffeine two or three days a week. And I don't have it till the afternoon once my tiredness really starts to kick in. But now let's look more long term, Hillary. What do we do on a long term basis? Something that takes a little more time to kick in. On a long-term basis, and of course, you know, every day is a, a piece of work, but um, absolutely. on the long-term is staying on a schedule, having a routine, um, making sure I'm going to bed at the same time, making sure I'm waking up at the same time every morning. Like for instance, you know, I, today's Saturday and I didn't have to be up at 7.30 in the morning, but it's so good for humans in general, we're just creatures of habit and anxiety just thrives off inconsistencies. So it's hard. Of course, like some nights I'm like, "Mm, do I really want to do my 15 minutes of reading? No, but I really try hard to use behavior activation when it comes to that. So I push myself to do the things that I need to do and my mood will follow instead of my mood dictating what I'm going to do. I agree with you there. I plan out my day prior. I write down, you know, an hour, six, seven, eight, go through the day. I have my meetings, whatever locked in. And I plan out what I'm going to do. My two most or three most important things, right? When I wake up before I check email, before I do anything else, I attack those things. So I'm not distracted. Then I take my fitness break in the morning, have my breakfast, and then come back here and start my day. Love the systems recommendation. But now let's talk about what we're doing for the awareness of mental health. We know about the career. We know you're going back to graduate school. Let's talk more about everything. So I (laughs) am a very outspoken person about pretty much everything. And one day I was sitting at my brother's outside and I went on this whole rant about mental health, about how I woke up in the morning. I was just hysterically crying, had no idea why. And I just give a little snippet of like what I was dealing with and Vinny, the people that reached out wasn't, it was insane. They're just talking about how bad the pandemic has been, what the struggles they go through. So many people with OCD, anxiety, depression have reached out. And I was like, wow, the thing is in this day and age, you know, everyone tries to separate everybody, but we're all so similar. Um, So the next day I was like, wow, maybe this is something we should talk about more. And I started this blog and the, just the people reaching out was insane. Just saying how brave I was for sharing my story, how much they related to it. And I thought that if I can talk about my experiences with mental health and when I have a bad day or when I have a good day, it really opens the door and the opportunity for conversation. And that's so important, especially, especially now. I couldn't agree with you more. One of my reasons for launching the limited series I have on YouTube been story shares because of how powerful stories are, how powerful our experience sharing is. No matter who you are, we all battle some type of challenge every day, maybe from our hometown, maybe at work, maybe in our personal life. But if we share our stories, something may click in for you. And that's one of the goals with all my platforms. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for the courage to share your story again today, Hillary. I think we're going to get into the spotlight story for everyone new to the show. Each week I share the story relating to mental health of someone who is famous because I want to let everyone know you are not alone. And for today, we're going to be speaking about today's guest's favorite mental health advocate in Kaylor Betts. And this is what I came across online on his profile. My name is Kaylor Betts and I am the founder of the Mental Health Project. From as far back as I can remember, I have been challenged by my mental health, depression, anxiety, panic attacks, ADHD, and addictions. These were a big part of my life for many years. These challenges I faced have sparked an obsessive journey in my life to not only be able to deal with these challenges, but overcome them and become the most extraordinary version of myself, a mission to become unstoppable. I have become an entrepreneur and coach for 12 years where I started in the fitness industry, eventually building and running a private gym for five years. I've helped hundreds of clients with their physical and mental health. He wanted to do more. So almost a year ago, he said, I was sitting on my couch and had an aha moment. After transitioning out of the fitness industry, I had been lacking a sense of meaning and purpose in my life 
And that sentence is very big right there. Everyone needs a purpose. When I switch to my purpose-driven work, there's something I'm passionate about. I swear it's night and day from the way I felt and just approached each day. I had continued to help people build their mental and physical health after the fitness industry, but all of a sudden it hit me. I realized that I needed to turn what I always thought was my biggest pain, weaknesses, and something I honestly felt quite ashamed about into my biggest gift. Becoming open about the fact that I've struggled with my mental health too, I was awakened to the fact that my calling in this world was to become an advocate, share my story, bring people together who need to improve their mental health. It was only days after this incredible special moment in my life that I came up with the concept of the Mental Wealth Project. Hillary, what do you take away from this story? I love him. <laughs> I am head over heels obsessed with this man. He is so intelligent and on top of it, very easy on the eyes. <laughs> um, so I came across him and I really wanted to take from him his journey because everybody starts small and it's the like you were saying it's the small stuff every day there's the small wins so you can get to the big wins mm -hmm. i watched a video maybe two or three days ago he had come on and he's talking about how he has always been on antidepressants anti-anxiety medication sleep medication which is the same for me i've been pres prescribed all of these things mm -hmm. And he talks about how the thing that changed his life was what he was eating, the exercise, staying on a schedule. And of course, I don't want to take away from any kind of Western medication that, you know, I'm on medication. Some people need it forever. Some don't. Um, but he made such a good analogy of saying, hey, some of these things come from genetics or hereditary, but that's just the gun. Our environment is the trigger. What we do to work on ourselves, whether it's deep breathing or meditation or grounding, um, it, it really has shown me that we're in control. And if we're determined enough, we can do whatever we need to do to become healthy mentally and physically. And watching his journey, he says it saved his life knowing that what he needed to do was with inside him or inside him within him. I <laughs> combine that. Um, and it's not always outside factors. Again, with the story sharing how powerful it is, you could see the importance. I mean, the significance right there. Very, very well said. Every brain, and I learned this with my TBI, every brain is unique. There's no one brain like another. There's no one size fits all. So it can come, a disparity can come from any angle and it can affect you in many ways. So you know what works best for you. Go with your strengths, do things that make you happy because it can make a major difference. And Hillary, I want to thank you so much for joining the show. The value is throughout. I loved how you shared your courageous story. You transitioned that into a professional career. You emphasized reading systems and of course that analysis with Kayla Betts. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to ask you, for your last word. My last word, if I had any advice, is to, to find the things you love to do and do them. And even though you can have one day being super sad, the next day you might be totally and completely happy. So it's worth the fight. It's worth the pushing through. And everybody's going through it. And to never feel alone. That's for sure. <laughs> Amazing last word. Now, please let everybody know how they can find you, find what you're up to. Say hello. All right. Well, I'm on Instagram and my handle is H-S-B-L-A-K-E-L. I actually stole that because it was my old uh, email address in undergrad. <laughs> so thanks, FGCU, for that. And I have a blog that's linked on there. It's called We Are All Mad Here, which is a Alice in Wonderland reference. <laughs> and um, if you guys are interested, I'd love for you to check it out. I think that maybe sharing my story or reading about me will help other people in their journey and in their struggles. I'll have her link in the bio of the episode for that blog. So Hillary, please send that to me so we can get that in there. And while you're on social media, be sure to check out the show too. We're at a mental health break across the board, except on Twitter. We're at podcasts by Lancey. So you get updates from all the shows.
My handles are at Vincent A. Lancy for all social media and YouTube. And my website is VincentALancy.com. Thank you all for listening and supporting another week. We will see you for the next episode of A Mental Health Break. <laughs>